all things being equal, maybe we spent one half a class on the displacement and tragedy and injustice of Middle Eastern and Sephardic Judaism. And therefore, the day of commemoration instituted by the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, a couple of years ago, according to which every year on November 30th, one day after the day in which we celebrate the UN partition plan that gave international legitimacy to the state of Israel on November 29th, 1947, is a day in which we take a breath and remember the blight of most of us sitting in this room. In Hebrew, there's a term called tikkun avla, which means rectifying, alleviating a wrong. So that wrong, first and foremost, is domestic within Israel and world Jewry. The plight and suffering and displacement and disposition of Middle Eastern Jewry can no longer and will no longer become marginalized and peripheralized. And that's very important. <laughs> and on the universal international level, we are a proactive people we are masters of our own destiny. So we build forward. 850,000 Jews who originate from Arab lands. Add to that, in the aftermath of the Islamic Revolution in 79, those are brothers and sisters from the Persian community who gave the LA Jewish community such an injection of love and traditionalism and presence. Altogether, the number of Jewish refugees from the Middle East exceeds by far the number of Palestinian refugees. And the assets confiscated by the Arab leaders and the leaders of Iran, do I have to tell you, my beloved friends, brothers and sisters, that they are in the billions, homes, businesses, exceed by far the monetary and material worth of the homes and businesses and possessions of the Palestinians, many of whom were called upon by their own leaders to leave and come back once the Jewish state is destroyed and the Jews are slaughtered. This is just a fact. The world needs to know this fact. We need to be more vocal. Respectfully, I say to the distinguished Consul General, all of Israeli diplomacy and political elite must be vocal. There cannot be a monetary compensation to the Palestinian refugees without symmetry. It should be taken. But beyond the dramatic intensity and pain and even tragedy that we commemorate and remember tonight, I will end, because you know when you give her by five minutes, he speaks for 15, <laughs> by saying the following, that today is also, I dare say, a chag. Today is a day of rejoicing, on cel of celebrating, because I ask all of you with love to look at where you are today and where your descendants are, and to think about that day you left, and how you felt, and how you were treated, and how little you had. And I want you to embrace all your loved ones and think about the empire that you built, not only successful businesses, but beautiful families and beautiful communities. And that's the difference between us and sadly our Middle Eastern neighbors and the Palestinians. We became masters of our own destiny. They choose to live in victimhood and despair. And we long for that day in which things will change and our neighbors will also become proactive. I want to conclude by saying that we're reading now in the Torah, we read very recently about the first refugee that mentioned, that's mentioned in the Torah. He comes to Abraham and he says that there is a war going on. And he says, palit The refugee came and he, told, he said what happened. And that's the responsibility of everyone in this room, starting first and foremost, foremost, those of you who actually left your respective places of birth. You should convey these to your children.
This is an honorable legacy, what our community has built. And uh, therefore, this is also a day of celebration and festivity. Hashem should uh, bless all of us with long health and life. And God forbid that we know and we pray that our descendants will not have to go through that journey. Let them cherish and honor our journey and uh, move forward as one community, as one people. Welcome.